creator and founder of Silky Sex and I'm here today to bring you the fourth video in our Wig 101 series. Today we're going to be talking about tools, products, and tips to slay and lay that wig, ladies. But before we get into that, let me just give you a little bit of background about myself. My name is Ikoya. I am the creator and founder of Silky Sacks. A Silky Sack is a silk line bag that I designed and created to not only store your wigs, but to protect them and add longevity to them. The silk lining allows the hair to just glide, cutting down on tangling, matting, and shedding, which will in the end result to a longer lifespan for your wig. So if you're interested in finding out more about the products in Silky Sacks, the link to the website will be down in the description box below. So let's get into this. So you guys, if you haven't been watching our series, I will put the link to videos one, two, and three below. Our last video was about how to put a wig on because wigs have come really, really far in the last, what I would say, four years. Uh, the technology of them, they're starting to look more and more like hair. And so they're getting more and more popular because of you know celebrities rocking them and wearing them and so we want to help you get ready and get in so everybody has been waiting for this video so mama got her tea so get your tea because this one might be a little long but we're gonna go ahead and get into it so the first thing I want to talk about is tools and I will give tips all throughout the video um, and then we'll get into products and then hopefully I won't get too long and we'll get into tricks. So one of the things that you will be needing especially if you're going to be wearing wigs a lot is a hot comb. It's a hot comb. I highly recommend you get a hot comb. This is the one that you plug up and I like it because I travel a lot. Um, I know some people have the one that you can put in the iron, but I like this one because I can travel with it a lot easier. And this is really great to go in, especially in the roots, and really straighten out um, a wig if it's like poofy um, or if you just want to get it straighter. A flat iron. This is my brand, Silky Sacks uh, Flat Iron. I do recommend that you have a flat iron. If you, especially if you wear um, a lot of human hair units or if you wear um, straighter wigs, I feel like these ones go in and really help the hair to get straight. You can also use it to do a little curling if you need to, but I recommend um, both because I find with this one, you can get in the uh, your edges a little bit better, really in, in the roots, excuse me, not edges, the edges too, but the roots better than you can with a flat iron. So, um, like I said, I will put the links to this stuff down below. And then also a curling iron. I already had a curling iron because I curled my hair. I don't suggest you, you don't have to have a curling iron because you can use rollers um, to curl hair. These are also work good for going up at the top and flattening your hair. But And I would also suggest, unless it's human hair or unless it says, always start low with these things and then go higher because once it's super, super hot, you can't, you only have to wait for it to cool down, but you can always go up and make it hotter, so that's a little tip. Um, you're also gonna need scissors, you guys. I just got these in the hair aisle at my local Dollar Tree. Um, you don't need anything super fancy or really expensive shears unless you really get in there and cut, but I like these just to cut stray hairs, cut the packaging off, and these were a dollar and they work great. Another tool that I love and you should invest in is a edge brush or baby hair brush. I don't know, I've heard them call it both. This one I got, I think, at either the local beauty supply or I know they sell them at the Dollar Tree as well too. But on this end, it's a little comb and this side is a brush. And this is great for when you're laying down your edges and your baby hair. Some people use a toothbrush. You can use a toothbrush. But I like this because of comb here when you are taking your hair out. And here's another little uh, trick or tip I will add here. This comb, I like it because you can use it when you're using your own hair to camouflage the line of demarcation you can go in with this and just pull down you have the comb and the comb you can uh, really get in there and get fine get those fine little baby hairs with this little comb and then go ahead and use the brush to brush it up into the wig and camouflage that line of demarcation so boom there you go get you a 
baby hair comb brush. Now, something that I do when I go to my local coffee shop or um, Starbucks is they have these like little wooden sticks and I take a little handful. But these are great, you guys, for applying glue. If you use like wig glue, then you can just take and put the glue on the stick and just rub it in and it keeps um, your comb. Because I know some people do it with a rat tail comb and you can do it with a rat tail comb, but at at the end it'll get all like sticky and gross so these you can just use these and when they're done just throw them away um so yeah definitely a rat tooth comb a rat tooth comb is great because you can get in and part the hair really well but it's also great to once you put the wig uh glue on or whatever adhesive you use this rat tail is great to press press down and without getting the wig glue in your hand because wig glue you guys can get super sticky i don't know if you've ever used it before but it gets really really sticky um, and so that's a nice way that you can save the end of your rat tooth comb because I also like to use it to part the wigs that have free parting. So there's that. Um, also, these are great, these um, she comb shears. If you want to thin a wig out, you just go in and use that. I got these from my local beauty supply. Those are great. I would also recommend a bore brush when you're brushing your own hair down to prepare to put your wig on. This works great. It also is great if you do like updos or half dos with your ponytails uh, or ponytails in your wigs. This is a great brush and I think I got this also from the Dollar Tree or maybe my local beauty supply but yeah a bore brush I would definitely recommend. Now in addition to you, you having a bore brush also want to have your paddle brush paddle brushes are great especially for synthetic wigs for to help with um detangling and just brushing the wig out and then i recommend especially if you wear synthetic wigs to find a little small like travel size one i think i also got this one from the dollar tree it works great because your wig is going to tangle i mean especially if it's synthetic that's just the the way it goes and so you want to be able to brush it out while you're out so you just take and start from the bottom and just brush up especially in the nape wigs really get tangled there in the nape especially in the summertime if you're doing a lot of sweating so you definitely want to invest in not just a bore brush but also a paddle brush and a small little paddle brush that you can take with you just to do your touch-ups when you're out and about and then uh, of course you will need uh, alligator clips these are clips from my brand silky sacks but these are great you guys i really really recommend you get some type of clip so that you can clip your hair back this works great especially when you're trying to do like baby hair or you're putting your makeup on these really help hold the hair back out of your face so that you can get busy on what it is you're doing i also recommend that you use some kind have some kind of scarf or a tie down to like lay your hair down or lay the wig down to make it flat. It, um, here at Silky Sex, I have my brands one and I just use that to like help lay down baby hair. But if you don't have that or if you don't want to order one, you can use any kind of scarf. The catch is it has to be silk. Make sure it's a silk scarf and you can use that to like tie down your hair to help it lay down. That's great for when you're doing ponytails, when you just want to lay the top of the wig down and help it to get more flat and also if you're into doing baby hairs. Also, I highly, highly recommend a wig grip. This one is from uh, Milano and this is a newer wig grip. It has um, the lace in the front. And you know, for some people, they it doesn't work for them. For some people, it does. Like a lot of these things, I'm going to be talking to you guys about today. But I highly recommend this. It protects the edges first of all because you don't have to use your comb, so you don't have that pulling going on with your hair. And the other thing is that I like about it is it does hold your wig in place. Now, if somebody yanks your hair or you pull your hair, of course you're going to be able to pull the wig off. This is not going to keep your wig from getting pulled off but it will keep your wig from like sliding back and most importantly I really recommend them especially if you wear wigs every single day because y'all we want our edges okay it's fun to wear wigs when you don't have to when you have to wear wigs then that's another thing and and there's nothing wrong with the people I don't want to offend anybody if you have to wear wigs but I'm just saying if you don't have to wear a wig most people would prefer not to and have the option to wear their hair sometimes so do everything you can to protect your hair and your edges here at Silky Sacks. Our slogan is better care is better wear and that is not just for wigs. That's for you real hair too. 
And last but not least, I want to recommend that you get a wig head, you guys. So, I got this wig head from a local Goodwill. You can get them at your beauty supply. You can order them on Amazon. This one I used because I dyed this wig for a glow-in-the-dark commercial that we did here at Silky Sex. So, I used this one to, like, dye um, wigs on. I also sew wigs. So, I got a little bit of a nicer head from Amazon that I use for that. But why you would need a wig head is if you want to do some styling on your wig, if you want to dye your wig. I know people put um, their wigs on their wig head and cut the lace off first before they put their wig on. Or they'll use their wig head to style their wig. And you can get a tripod. Um, and then some of the more professional wig heads come with a little piece that you can put on the end so that you can actually attach the wig to like your cabinet or wherever but I do recommend if you are, are wearing wigs a lot that you do invest in some type of wig head whether it's a cheaper little styrofoam one or a more expensive one that is used to make wigs they will come in handy okay so we're getting ready to get into these products now look let me take a sip products you guys these are the products that I use, that I have experienced, some of these products, if you try them, they may not work for you, and that is okay. I am not um, a beautician. I'm not a professional cosmetologist. These are just things that since I've been wearing wigs over the last uh, few years that I have tried and that they have worked. It is just like natural hair products, right? There's going to be some things that you're going to try. You're going to see somebody on YouTube say, oh, I use this. You're going to go and try it and be like, oh, yes, girl, let me see. Let me get it. And then you don't look like they looked. And then you be mad. Well, because you have to remember that everything isn't for everybody and everything doesn't work for everybody. And so that brings me to a tip. Try these small travel size, you guys. Get these small travel size products when you're first trying out a product. That way, if it doesn't work, guess what? You don't have a whole huge bottle and you ain't spent a gazillion dollars. Or even a five or six dollars is a lot of money to be spending on products. And you know, we use a lot of products. So, just a little tip. Go to your local beauty supply. Target also is great for travel size. Get the travel size. See if it works. And if it works, when it runs out, then go ahead and get the big size. So let's get into it. So when it comes to washing my wigs, I use this Cantu. Uh, you can see it's old. I use this Cantu Shea Butter Natural Hair on both my human and synthetic wigs. It is sulfate free and that's why I like to use it. When I wore weaves, I would wear, of course, a texture that matched my hair. So I tried to use a sulfate, sulfate excuse me, free shampoo and a shampoo that I could use also on my real hair since they were the same texture. So I do recommend that you use a sulfate free shampoo, whatever type of shampoo that you use for both synthetic and human hair wigs. Then for um, conditioner, I use this Argan Oil Moroccan Oil Infused Conditioner. And the reason why I like this conditioner is because it already has oil in it. Synthetic wigs, because they're made of plastic, they cannot absorb oil. So if you were just to put oil on the wig, it's not going to absorb. It's going to be like greasy and be like messy and hangy and stringy. So I like to use the conditioner that already has the oil in it. So that way the hair is getting moisturized without having to go back and add oil. And this is also great for human hair. And then with human hair, I just like to take whatever leave-in conditioner or styling product that I use. Usually those already have moisturizer in them or some kind of conditioner in them. And that's great because as I'm styling the hair and using that product, the human hair is also getting conditioner because guess what? It's not getting it from your scalp. Um, for gel, I go with the old faithful eco style. I have the argan oil one, but they have different types of gels that have different oil bases. So you got to figure out which one works best for you. I uh, like the argan oil. Um, it's for curly hair. And when I was wearing more human hair and more human weaves, I would use this kinky curly custard to help get the curls back into the wig or to put it in or to do that wet and wavy look. I really like this. I think this works really well. Spray a little water on, put some of this in there and it works pretty good. As far as hairsprays and curling, this you guys to me is the GOAT. This is L'Oreal's. 
spray um, and it's not cheap it does come in a little travel size one so if you don't use a lot of hairspray then I would definitely say go with this little one but this holds if you're trying to do um, wand curls or crimps in a human hair wig honey yes 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 all right and then of course the famous got to be I love to use the got to be glue to uh, spray my wigs down I actually prefer this over using a wig glue but that's uh, what I like to use now as far as the gels when I first started seeing these on YouTube, these were all the rage, right? So I went to the beauty supply. I got me one of each. The black one, I do not like. It does not work well for me. I have seen many, many reviews by some serious wig slayers, and they swear by the black one. I don't like the... It leaves my hair really gooey, and just a little bit... It was really hard to get out for me, and a little bit sticking like. I prefer this one the yellow one as you can see look she's almost gone so that's the thing like I was saying earlier figure out I mean try to tr get these in the smaller bottles you guys get them in the smaller bottles so that you can figure out which one you like best or which one works best for you so there's that then I love to use this on the baby hairs this really helps lays baby hairs especially now these wigs come with these baby hairs look it's baby hair adults Somebody referred to them, I can't remember who, as spiders. And yes, these spiders, baby hair, adults, baby hair marathon going on. This really helps lay them better. And then, guess what? I tried the smaller one first. And now, when this one, another tip, when this one gets empty, I will take and put some from this one into this one. And this one I will carry with me because I travel for a living. And you can't have bigger products with you. So I will just save this bottle and keep refilling it. That's another tip for you. Save your smaller bottles if you can and refill them. And then you have something to take with you when you're traveling. So if you lose it or whatever, you didn't lose your whole, you know, shebang. You didn't lose your whole gel. You got your little one that you can use. This is Ghost Bond Wig Glue. I've used it here and there. I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of wig glue um, just because I want to preserve my edges. But um, here and there, I will use it, especially um, when um, I'm going somewhere and I want the wigs down forever and ever. But I really feel like this works better. So wig glue, if you need it, if you're you know going on like a trip and you don't plan on taking your wig off then you can definitely use this but I'm not a big fan of wig glues shampoo dry shampoo is your friend especially if you're wearing a lot of synthetic wigs a lot of synthetic wigs because it is plastic they come with that like that shine to it so these um, dry shampoos you can put on there and it'll help take that shine away now I know some people will say baby powder and swear by baby powder I don't use baby powder just because talcum powders a few years ago were a part of this big lawsuit where people were getting cancer and Equoia doesn't want cancer so I prefer this and as you can see I got it in a little small bottle I believe you can get these at Target's and another tip if you wear a lot of natural colors or darker color hairs like 1B, uh, 2's ones they have a uh, dry shampoo that comes in brunettes because dry shampoo when you spray it on leaves like kind of like a white film if you wear like a lot of color or blondes it doesn't show up as good but on black hair especially darker ones darker wigs you can see it so I highly recommend that you get the brunette one and that way you can put your dry shampoo on there and people won't be able to see it lace tint spray this is um, even tinted lace spray and it comes in like three tones and uh, lace tint spray um, is pretty popular a lot of wig makers and um, smaller companies make the tinting spray I got this one from even at my local beauty supply these really come in handy with all these new um, HD lace wigs and the what lace collection because the lace is so light or so clear you gotta have to customize it or darken it up if you are darker skin to make it blend and melt in with your hair so these are nice for that um, you can create your own because they only have certain colors you can create your own if you take a spray bottle and water in your foundation and mix them together and then you can spray that and kind of customize and make your own 
these you still probably unless you have like the exact color of your skin you probably will need to go back in still with your foundations um, powders and stuff to make it work but this is convenient because you can just go ahead and spray the lace and um, you don't have to do as much work as if you just went in with makeup so these are nice um, and I would definitely invest in one and just try it and see but like I said before you can always use your own makeup to do it a wig cap these are really cheap you can get most wigs especially when you order a lot of human hair wigs they come with these like and they're usually like two in the pack they come in different colors you know just get the one that is closest to your skin tone or your scalp and they usually come in two and once you get a, enough of these you can just use them over and over and over and over again they're super cheap but I definitely recommend that you wear um, these caps because it protects your hair from uh, I mean it's because it protects your wig from getting all dirty the inside of the cap especially if you're gonna sell sell the wig also I just discovered and I ordered some but they're not gonna get here on time these wig liners that you can put inside of the wig to help with sweating because I sweat a lot especially in the summer so you guys I will be following up and letting you guys know how these wig groups work but that's just a little tip and trick you can put these liners in there and I was thinking about it you can the pressed powder sheets for makeup you could probably put those in the in the rim of your wig and that would probably help absorb some of that sweat so powder and concealer you guys you're really gonna need powder and concealer especially now to help conceal that hairline and define the parts in these wigs so I um, take I like an angled brush and I got this from my local Dollar Tree um, brush but if you you know you can use your own makeup brush I just like to have a brush for you know everything I do and I mean this was a dollar so as you can see this angle here to me really helps when you're going in and trying to really define that part I like to use concealer on my parts just because I find that concealer is thicker and the concealer helps hide those little knots that people always talk about bleaching. I feel like it hides those, those knots, especially on synthetic wigs, a little bit better because it's much thicker. And then powder. The Fit Me powder is great, you guys, because it's affordable. Um, you can get it at your local beauty supply and um, they work really well. And I prefer to use the powder on my hairline. So if I have a hairline and I have like baby hair that I want to put down and blend, then I like to go over with this. Because you, I do use my foundation, but I have a stick foundation and that's really thick. And so if you're using a stick, a stick foundation, you don't want to have, you know, turning your baby hairs and little hairs in the front brown or the color of your skin because your hair would not be right. So... You definitely want to go in with uh, either concealer or powder. I recommend just having both. I mean, it's your preference. Like I said, everything don't work for everybody. But um, whether you use your own concealer or foundation or whatever, I think powder definitely is better for the hairline. And concealer is definitely for the part. That's just my little tip for that. Another product that is great and that is a must-have, especially with um, synthetic or human hair, is these wax sticks. Um, I got this online it's by Kira Care. Kira Care has great products their products are also great for your real hair but um, this works great to just rub in to the hair before you flat iron it or before you take the hot comb to it it just helps um, the hairs lay down especially when you have colored hair like this see this little straight hair wax you up and it just helps the hair stay and cuts down on those frizzies and then you just take your hot comb and rub it through and that works great and then the other thing that I found that works really great and I got this at a, a local beauty spray is this wig shine oil free spray you guys especially with these natural wigs that they're coming out this is so awesome this you just spray it into your hand and put it on there as you can see I got a small size because I wanted to try it and I really like it so when this bottle is empty I will go back and refill it with the bigger bottle but this works really great especially on synthetic and more natural style wigs you can put this in there because it's oil free so you don't have to worry about it looking like all greasy. and so the last product that I want to talk about which is going to roll us right into what I know you guys have all been waiting for is the tips and tricks is mousse so mousse 
is a great product. I got this from the Dollar Tree. I know some people are using that Nairobi mousse to uh, even gel down their baby hairs and style their wigs. I don't use that. I haven't um, tried it yet, so I can't speak on it. But I do love mousse, especially if you wear colored wigs and blonde wigs. Mousse Honey is your best friend. I got this from my local uh, Dollar Tree. And mousse is great because it's a water-based product, especially on synthetic wigs. It will just uh, sit right on there and slither into the plastic. You don't have to worry about it weighing the hair down. And it's great for frizzies and to uh, tame wild hairs, especially on colored wigs. So one trick is when you are cutting the lace off of a lace front wig, you don't want to cut the lace um, straight across. This will make the line of demarcation more obvious when you go to put the wig on later. It'll make the lace a lot more visible. To hide the lace, you want to just take and cut, either move the wig back and forth in a um, up and down motion with your wrist while you're cutting the lace, or just take your scissors and move them in an up and down motion while you're cutting the lace so that the lace isn't straight across. This will help later on when you're trying to uh, melt your lace. A lot of people talk about using powder to uh, darken the roots, but you can also use Sharpies. Sharpies are great, especially if you're not a big makeup wearer, if you wear colored wigs, but you don't have like palettes with like all these crazy colors and you know they're making wigs in these colors. These will come in handy. And did you know that you can dye synthetic wigs with Sharpies? But anyway, so let's show you how it works. I am taking my purple Sharpie and right along the hairline where the lace sits, I'm just coloring it in with the purple Sharpie. I know you probably couldn't see it as good with that purple wig. So I went in with my Fulani braid wig. Here's some footage of it before. And this is the Fulani wig without the Sharpie colored in. And this is footage of the Fulani wig now that I took and colored in the edges of the lace with the Sharpie. And I recommend you do this on a wig head. It just makes it a lot easier. Now I, by far, am not an expert when it comes to baby hair. I actually do not prefer baby hair, but a lot of these wigs nowadays are coming with baby hair. And I do like to use baby hair when I use colored wigs, colors like blue, orange, purple. And what I find is the best way to lay baby hair is to go on with Edge Booster. Edge Booster really works well, you guys. And then I go ahead and I take my little brush and I brush the baby hair into the direction that I want it to go. And then I put my finger down on the end of the swoop and kind of press it down and use my finger and my brush to kind of like guide the hair. But I find when I hold that uh, swoop the end of the swoop down with my finger it helps hold it in place a little bit longer and then I go on with my blow dryer on low heat and just blow dry it that's something new that I've added to it and you also can tie your hair down of course with the scarf to uh, hold and set those baby hairs so let's talk about the V method so the V method is a way to disguise your lace front wig what you do is surrounding the part on the wig you cut a V into the lace so you would cut here and here, creating a V around the part. And what that does is it makes the line of demarcation harder to detect because right where your part is, it stops. And then you go ahead and you fill your part in with your concealer, your powder, or whatever. So here is Nisha, the lace going straight across in the part. And here is Nisha with the V cut in there. So that's a way for you to see the difference. I like to do this on wigs that I wear a lot. Um, I just think that they make it a little bit harder to detect the lace. And then if you do the V method, you definitely wanna lay down these edges and these corners. Um, I spray mine with a little bit of got to be to keep it down and then put the blow dry on it because they can, when you cut the V, it does make the lace uh, flop a little bit and you can find that your uh, areas, the lace will just kind of roll back and creep and we don't want to be clocked. So make sure that you glue it down if you use the V method. Now, when it comes to HD lace, this is the latest two wigs. I have not tried an HD human hair wig but I did try an HD synthetic wig and I don't believe that this is true HD lace the lace on the human HD wig seems like it's just a little bit more clear and a little bit 
more uh, the lace isn't as white but I did try it on the synthetic wig and my tip for using wigs these newer wigs that are having these really really light lace is after I cut the lace off I take I, the lace and just spray a little bit of the tint the lace tint on it and then hold it up to your face and see if you need more and remember less is always more you can always go back and add more spray to your wig but you can't take it off so always use that so I would just use that and spray it and use that method and keep putting it across your head to see and get it to where you like it and then once you're ready then put the wig on your wig head or your mannequin head excuse me either one and then you just want to spray however many layers and then put it on your head and see how it's looking and you want to just keep doing that until you get it to where you want you can also go in with some of your foundation to help hide it uh, concealer I felt like I said it before I really think concealer is really good for concealing parts and then last but not least always you want to take some powder and just rub the powder against your hairline and against uh, that wig line that hides it also helps to hide it and make it look a little bit more scalp I think the powder is nicer because it's lighter and it melts a little bit more and it's not as obvious as when you use concealer now when you glue your wigs down I don't glue my wigs down a lot you guys but when I do glue my wigs down you want to use oil and alcohol to remove it so what you do is take rubbing alcohol and just rub it along the hairline you want to rub that first around that lace perimeter and then after you've rubbed the alcohol on there let it sit for a minute and then you want to take whatever oil you use and preferably it'll have an old shaped top and you just want to take that and squeeze that along the hairline as well and then you want to rub it in rub it in rub it in then I would let it sit for a good three to five minutes so just the oil give the oil opportunity to just go in and penetrate and loosen up that glue and loosen up that lace please do not just rip it off that is a sure way to start ripping out your edges and leave it on a little longer and then once you pull it it should just lift right up you shouldn't have to do a lot of yanking and ripping because you definitely don't want to tear up your edges so that is it for the tools products and tips I hope you enjoyed all the tips throughout the video and these ones here at the end I hope you will join us again next Wednesday for our final episode when we talk about storage because how you store your wig is very vital and very important to how long your wig will last if you learn something please share it down in the comments I don't know every tip and trick so if you have a tip and trick that you like to use that I did not mention please share it down in the comments below we love to have conversations with you guys and keep this thing going and like I said before if you haven't already go back and watch videos three two and one we appreciate you all my subs love you so much and all of you who are new to wigs I'm hoping that this is really thorough I know this one was a long one but I thank you for hanging in there I hope you had some good information again let us know any questions or concerns you may have down in the comments below and remember better care is better wear